Hello everyone. I'm here today to give you a few ideas on preparing for your exams. So I hope that these are useful to you. The first thing that I want to say is that there is a difference between learning and cramming. Cramming is trying to get a lot of information into your head in a very short time. This is what most students do. It's not a really successful way to do things because you don't have time to learn things. Learning is when you understand what it is that you are supposed to be using in the exams. The good thing is that when you learn something, you can use it over and over and over and you can add to it. Cramming means you put it into your head, you might remember it, you might remember it long enough to get it into the, to use it in the exams, but then it, you chuck it out of your head and you'll probably never use it again, whereas learning is about understanding what it is that you have been studying. Now the other important thing is, and this is one of the really useful ones, is to take short breaks often when you're studying. This means that when you go back to start studying again, your brain has had a little time to relax. It's had time to absorb the information that you've already been studying and you can add to it. Your brain can process all of that and it helps store things. You know when you're washing up, if a wet X or a cloth is wet, then it's absorbed all the water it can. It, you can't put any more water into the washing up cloth. That's the same with your brain. When, it's, when, it's, uh, when you've been studying for a long time, your brain is full. You're not going to get any more information in there. So you've got to take a bit of time, wring the water out of your brain and start studying again. Your brain needs stimulation. So give it a rest every now and then. This is the same as the point before, so that you use the next study period to concentrate on learning. And this is a signal to your brain that the new learning is important. We learn new stuff every day. Some of it we can discard, some of it we want to keep. But allowing your brain to have a rest means that just Starting again means that it's a signal to the brain, as I said, that this is important. Now, part of learning means being able to bring that same information back to your head. This is revision. So if you've learned something, you've been studying something for uh, a, a few hours, come back in a couple of days and look at that same material because it will help consolidate that learning in your head. So don't do it all in one go and think that you've learned it because revision is about coming back and bringing that information up out of your brain again so that, it's, so that you actually, your brain starts to remember and to learn. Now some, sometimes you can study with friends. Now you don't have to just sit there and read from the book. Test each other on what you've, what you've learned. Uh, you can write down short sentences and tell the other person to finish it. You can say, what's the definition of? What, what does this mean? You can give them a calculation. Do this so that they are testing each other because while you are testing them, you're also consolidating the material that you are teaching them, uh, that you've been taught. One of the things that I do as a learning advisor is I don't know everything that you students come to me with, but because I have to learn that to help you, I'm actually learning that material as well. And because I see student after student, I can bring that, that same information back and I'm actually learning that material. Now this is something interesting that I hadn't thought of. I read this in uh, something online. 
But I actually do this unconsciously, and that is associate the information with the place where you study it. Now, for example, if you study a certain part of your topic in the classroom, look around the classroom and see what things there are that you can use to stimulate your brain to recall that information. If you do that same, you study the same information in the coffee shop, try to associate that information with the coffee shop or if you're talking with a friend because sometimes you say look i can't remember what it was we were talking about but i know you we were in the coffee shop you were sitting there and you had on a red sweater yeah Oh, I remember. So it's using physical things in your environment to stimulate the memory. So if you can associate, study in different places so that you can associate the environment with the information that you're trying to absorb. Okay, sleep. I'll come to that in a minute because it's a really important part of studying. But the research says if your test is a week away, you should plan two study periods at least one to two days apart. So today's Monday, I'm having an exam next Monday. So I'm going to plan to study for that exam, I'm going to study on Tuesday and Thursday. Now this is what we've talked about before, getting the information, allowing your brain to get the information into your head, revise it and so on. If you are for a Friday test, study on Monday and review on Thursday. If your test is a month away, begin studying in one week intervals. So your month, the test is a month away, study in the first week, the second week, the third week, and then in the fourth week, you do a couple of times study that week. You have to plan your study because you're trying to fit in your life with everything else. If you're studying in the bus or the train on the way to work, that's not really an effective way to study because unless, of course, you can focus on the work, focus on what you're studying, the, because you're focused about getting to work on time and your head is probably dealing with all of the other passengers and blah, blah, blah. But choose it so that you've got time and give yourself 45 minutes. Sit down for 45 minutes, have a break. 45 minutes, have a break. Don't do more than three hours in one go. Okay, now the other one is this, sleep. The sleep is the finisher on learning. The brain is ready to process and categorize and solidify what you've been studying. Once you get tired, your brain is saying it's had enough. It's not, it is simply not going to do any more. So if your brain is tired, go have a sleep. Sleep is just as important because it allows the brain to relax, it allows the brain to process the information while you're sleeping. and you come back with some sort of freshness. In fact, if I'm in, when I'm doing an exam, if it's a choice between sleeping and studying and I'm tired, I will sleep. Because your brain will not take in any more information once you're tired. At least when you sleep, you can wake up refreshed and ready to do the exam. All right, now, I hope that you can use some of those tips. Um, I like to say study hard, but in fact, it's study smart. Uh, I wish you heaps and heaps of success for your, uh, for your exams. And I'll be around. You've got my email address and you've got my telephone number. And I won't be sleeping until the exams are finished because I'm here for you guys. So you can contact me anytime at all. If you need someone just to talk over your nervousness, uh, talk over any of the subjects, you need a tutor for the last few days, just get in touch with me and um, may the force be with you.